Howdy folks, TJ here. Almost spring here where I live. Oh, I'm getting ready for fly fishing. See, in the winter time, I typically prefer sitting by a nice roasty toasty fire, sipping on something, chatting with friends, family, the wife, petting the pooch. While some other more hardy folks would be out fishing in the snow and tromping through all that, not me. <laughs> so I look forward to spring because there's also another reason I don't typically fish around wintertime. Because here in California where I live, this, the rivers close during certain points of the year. Typically the last or middle of November, like November 15th, season terminates in certain areas. And then restarts again the last Saturday of April. Which means there's many, many months, what's that, five and a half months of no fishing in my local rivers here. I have to basically travel about an hour up the hill, further into the mountains, where yes, there'll be lots of snowpack and other stuff that you have to contend with. Hour and a half for the, the places I prefer. So yeah, typically in wintertime, I don't fish that much. But spring's coming just around the corner. This is early March. And I wanted to talk about pond hopping, Tenkara pond hopping to be specific, because it is a lot of fun. Traditionally, I'm more of a mountain stream fisher. I live up in the mountains of California, so I have tons of Sierra streams that I can hit that are perfect for Tenkara, kind of like in Japan. In fact, I've seen pictures of Japan that look just like California. Uh, very similar mountain terrain, lots of rock hopping. But what do I do in the meantime? Well, around here where I live, there's also plenty of ponds that have bluegill, various sunfish, bass. You know, I don't think there's any crappie. I don't think I've ever caught a crappie yet in my life. But mostly bass, bluegill, and various sunfish. So what does that mean? I just don't fish because this is originally designed for kind of mountain streams. No, I'm going to go out and fish because tenkar rods are phenomenal for pond hopping. I've got tons of ponds that have bluegill, sunfish, and even some bass. And the Imago is the rod that we're going to talk about today. I have not done a video on this one yet. And it was time because the Imago comes out every year around this time for pond topping. Why do I like it? Well, it's long. This case doesn't look that long, right? Well, this rod is 13 and a half foot long. 3.5 ounces, so relatively light. Not on the skinny 2.1 ounces like the Roto, but this rod's much more robust and much more beefy. Still a mid-flex rod if you follow Tenkara and the flex diameters of these rods. But the Imago is what we consider one of our bigger fish rods for Tenkara USA. The Imago and the Edo are kind of the king of that realm here at Tenkara USA. Big fish, big ponds, lakes, bigger rivers, any area that you need more reach. So let's chat about the Imago. So like the rest of our rods, it all comes in a very nice case. And it of course has Jeremy's wonderful line art drawing on there with Tenkar USA. All of our rods do come with a nice little rubber band around a pamphlet that tells you how to rig up and use the rod if you're brand new to Tenkara. So we just pull off this rubber band. Actually, I didn't really need to pull that off, but I did anyway. Top's got a screw cap. And what's cool about our rods is they do come with a screw cap. And maybe I can kind of get this in the video a little bit. It says, Amago. So we do have little uh, names on the top of our screw caps here. Why is that good? Well, when you collect more than one or two or three Tenkar rods, not that you have to have every single rod in the book, but a lot of folks end up having two. A small rod like the Roto and a bigger rod like the Sado, and in some cases three, kind of like me. Although I own all of them because I have to support them and know the product. Uh, the Imago is kind of that third one in my arsenal for long reach stuff, pond topping. So let's shimmy out the rod. Again, nice heavy duty case. So if you want to just take this and chuck it in the back of your car, four wheel drive, whatever, it's compact, small, to the point. All of our rods come in a nice rod sock, say Tenkar USA on it, and they're stretchy. And on one side is a little slit that lets you poop out the rod. Hey, I'm kind of color coordinated today. The Imago's got kind of this blue 
accent color, but I'm wearing blue. I didn't even plan on that. I, I'm not lying. I just happened to say, hey, I feel like I'm in a blue day today. So the Imago, let me show it up close, does have a blue, hopefully the video is showing it well, kind of a blue strip. The rod's a black color, but it does have little blue accent marks throughout various segments of the rod. So all of our rods uh, do come with a plastic wrap around the cork to kind of protect it during shipping. When it arrives, you can peel it off like a banana and take it off because you don't want that plastic on there and water getting underneath. Cork's pretty durable. Obviously, it's designed to get wet. So take that off. And our rod does say Imago. And like I said, it's kind of black in color. And it's 410 centimeters. For United States, that's about 13 and a half foot. Like every rod, on the back is a screw cap that you can unscrew so you can maintain and clean oh, your segments. What you want to do, you don't want to just dip this in water all day and go stick it in a case and leave it for months, right? It's going to get gooey and mildewy. You want to take the segments out the back of the handle. They all come out easily for anybody to take out, wipe off, clean off, and reinsert in the right direction in the back. Or should you ever break one of our rods, yeah, hey, stuff happens. As I get older, I fall more often. I fall on things like rods, and if something breaks, don't despair because our warranty is lifetime. All you pay is shipping and handling in most cases to get a segment out the back. You can remove just that one or two that you broke. We can send it to you and you can put it in yourself. So none of this long three weeks, four weeks, sending money in, getting the rod service. You can just call us and say, hey, I broke this and what do I do? And we, get, we, we have you covered basically. So. Uh, Amago on every rod is a plug. So some of our rod models have Lillian connected to the plug. The Amago is one of our oldest designs. We've had this a long time like the Iwana rod. The Amago, by the way, is a trout from Japan. Like our other rods in the early days, we named them after Japanese trout like Iwana, Yamame, Amago. All wonderful trout that are coming from Japan. So Amago, a fish I've never caught because I've never been to Japan. One day I hope to. So, pull the plug, shimmy out your tip like normal. There's your Lillian. Every 10 car rod should have one, and the rod extends like you normally do. That probably, heck, the, the, the camera's probably going in and out, in and out. <laughs> I can't open it in this room because this room's about 14 foot and it's gonna hit the wall. But this rod opens up to almost 13 or 13 and a half feet. And as you'll see, I'll kind of try to show again. I don't know if it's picking it up, but little blue accents throughout the segments. So it gives it a little color, a little, a little design element to it. Not that the trout really care. It's like, oh, did you see that, Tony? The, the rod's blue in color. I'm not going to choose this hook today. <laughs> trout don't do that. But they do harp off of your loud footsteps going up to the water. Before you get to the water... Don't just walk up to the water and start casting because a lot of times the trout are right there. Or bluegill. Bluegill are sometimes sitting right at the pond ready for you to catch them. So stand about 15 feet away from that and cast to those spots before you intrude on their territory because the odds are that first cast may catch you a fish close up. So don't disturb the close by waters. Tip for you of the day. If you are like me when I first started, I just pillage up to the, the water and start casting out 15, 20, 25 feet. What happens with all the stuff in the middle? Me being a rhino in a china shop scared everything away. So sneak up as gently as you can, place that fly right at the um, part where the water and pond meet. You may catch yourself a little surprise. And bluegill are a blast. Pound per pound, ounce for ounce, bluegill are some of the best fighting fish that I have ever caught. Little guy can give you a, a circus run for around the water, and they're a lot of fun. So if you're brand new to Tenkara, I would invite you to go to a pond first, because learning to use the rod and, and be able to say, what do I do? I've got a fish. What do I do? After catching a dozen or so bluegill, and a lot of times you'll catch much more than that because bluegill in the spring can be quite active, you'll start learning to lean the rod behind your head like so. That means the fish is coming at you, and you can then net it or let some slack in the line to let that fish go. So landing and going after bluegill is a hoot. Sunfish is a hoot because you can start learning how to play a fish. There's certain angles that you want to do. Of course, watching videos are wonderful, but get out there, catch some pond fish. Now, 
Bass are a little bit different. Bass are a little bit different fighters than bluegill. I wouldn't say they're stronger fighters. In fact, I find bluegill still to be the best fighters. I caught a, I call it a pizza pie, because it was like a pizza pie, and this thing weighed probably a couple of pounds. It was the fattest bluegill I've ever caught. What, did I call it bluefish earlier? That's a sea fish. I'm pretty sure I called it bluegill. Uh, it was perkin, and it really, I played that thing for a while, and it was a beast. So, pond hopping, a lot of fun. Tips. Well, they're a little bit different than trout. Some days on spring, you will see bluegill emerging to the top or sunfish. You'll see them all over the place. And they will, the second you flick a fly in the water, they all congregate to that fly. So you don't have to do much on some days, uh, depending on the weather, depending how cold it is. Is it sunny? Is it spring? All that stuff. But you can plop it out there and they just bombard just a straight hook at some points. Other days... Well, it's a little cold, and they're a little, little tired. They had they went to the bar the night before, so you're gonna let that fly sink. I kind of like a size 12 for everything I do, but our big oaky kabari, which is a size eight, if you've got bigger sunfish and bluegill, crappie or bass, having that big fly and let it sink. Just let it sink, and when you think the fly is a couple of foot down, then start pulsing it to the surface. It's almost like a streamer action. A lot of people say, hey, can I fish streamers with a tenkara rod? Well, yeah, kind of. You don't have line that you're stripping, but you can cast it way over to the side of you and have your 13-foot rod way over here and do little pull, 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 pull. See, I saw like I'm a shotgun. Pull, pull. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done that, too. Uh, anyway, you can kind of strip. Strip, strip, and get that streaming type of lure, if you want to call it that, or fly. Head in the direction you want in a streaming action. You can pretty much do anything. Some fish are not going to be too choosy, but I'd like to, if they're not harping up on the surface, let the fly sink for a while, and then you'll start seeing little shadows emerge from down below. Start expect, inspecting something like, what is that? And then they start going after it when you start tilting. Yeah, little little hips, little hips to get it up to the top. Hips, what's a hip? I don't know, my hip's starting to go. I'm starting to get old, but little little pulses. Pulse, that's the better word. Pulse to the top, pulse to the top. Slowly, and they start coming up and getting excited that you're casting them some food. And then, like I said, other days, you just plop that fly in the water, and you see, boom, right after it. And then other days, you've got a little bass that's kind of, he's kind of creeping over in the, the corner. They're, they're like little lurkers. They, it's right there. You can grab them, but, you know, he's smart. He, he doesn't want your bug for that day. But there's other days, yeah, you entice him enough, or he likes to hang out in this little dark area with all this stuff that you can lose your flies in. You cast it right over by there, let it sink a little bit, get his attention, and do a little pulsing of it. Grab his attention, and he may just harp on that oki kabari or whatever you like to use. Use whatever you like. There's no rules. It's whatever you want to do. That's the wonderful thing about Tenkara. So anyway, the Amago. Fun rod. Easy to use like any other Tenkara rod. This thing's pretty beefy. So I, some people don't like using the word backbone, but I do. I think it's got a lot of backbone for landing larger fish. Naturally, a longer rod has more leverage to help you land a bigger fish. It's got a nice mid-action flex to it. So if you're going after trout that are around 20 inches, if not more, a little bit, these Amagos or Ito work quite well. But like anything else, they're designed for trout around 20 inches. Bluegill, perfect. Bass, pound or two, perfect. Can it catch bigger? Oh, absolutely. There's people that catch pike. 28-inch uh, pike one time on the Edo, or a 25-inch big old fat rainbow on the Amago. It's all doable, but we try to set your expectations. What are they designed for? But if you know how to wield this tool, there's people that go after bigger fish, 10-pound carp, again, with the Amago. We, they know that it's not designed for that, so if they break it in a year because of their carelessness, if you want to say that, because they're landing these big 15-pound, 10-pound fish that the rod's not designed for, yeah, you're going to expect a little bit premature uh, rod having an issue. But overall, if you're going after just your typical 20-inch trout, uh, bass, bluegill, a couple pounds or less, you're going to be cherry with an Imago. Hey, cherry, cherry trout. What's that, the Yamame? I think the Yamame is the cherry trout, right? I forget. So many trout out there, and I haven't caught every single one of them. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Highly recommend the Amago for bigger fish, 
ponds, lakes, any place that you need more reach, the Imago is a phenomenally fun rod. So hopefully you enjoyed this little ride. Uh, get out and pond hop and get some fishing in before the season opens if you're in an area like me. And to go out and have some fun with the... I find they're just as fun as trout, bluegill, crappie. I haven't caught a crappie yet. One of these days, one of my friends needs to take me to a place that has crappie. But until then, sunfish, bluegill, trout, perfect. Thanks for watching the video and have a great spring. Bye.